All right, so the only way to do these is to practice. So let's imagine that we have NF3. So we're going to draw the skeletal structure. So we know that nitrogen is in the middle. Y is in the middle because anytime you have X, Y to the end, that is most likely in the middle. Also, nitrogen has a lower electronegativity than fluorine, putting it in the middle. But start here first with the X in the middle. So we've got that. We are going to have to single bond them, so I may as well just put them in. Let's count valence electrons. Nitrogen is a group five, so it has five. Each of the fluorines are in group seven, so we have three of them in group seven. So if we add all of our electrons up, we're going to get a total of 26. So as we fill these in, we're going to count our single bonds. We have three single bonds, which is going to be right now minus three times two, which is six. So we have 20 electrons left over. We're going to start by putting them on the outside atoms, not the nitrogen, but the fluorine. So we're just going to put them in until we obey the octet rule. So if we look at these and we add these up and we put in the remainder of these electrons to obey the octet rule on fluorine, we now have a total of 24 electrons giving us two left over and the two left over. The only place they can fit and follow the octet rule is on the nitrogen. Now everything sees eight. The octet rule is obeyed and this is our structure here for NF3. So let's try CS2. All right, CS2. Carbon we know is in the middle. Not only is it the different element out of the X, Y to the N, and Y just means that outside one of any number, it also has a lower electronegativity. We count our valence electrons. We have four plus two times six for a total of 16 electrons. If we put these guys in, we're gonna get carbon bonded to each of the sulfurs. And we have carbon bonded to each of the sulfurs. That's gonna be a total of four. Each of those single lines are four, and we've got 12 left over. So let's put the remaining 12 electrons on the sulfur. So 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. All right, so we've got this, and we've, we've got the correct number of electrons. We've used the entirety of the 16 electrons. Sulfur obeys the octet rule, but carbon does not, which means we have to start shifting electrons around. So we're going to start shifting electrons off the sulfur. It doesn't matter where you take them off the sulfur, just take a pair off of the sulfur and bring it in. If we do that, we now have double bonds between the carbon and the sulfur, with each sulfur having a remainder of four electrons as lone pairs, and the octet rule is obeyed. This is eight, this is eight, and this is eight. And we've got the octet rule obeyed with everything. Now, obviously, we don't have eight times three electrons. We've managed to make this work with 16 electrons because that's all we have from our structure. So let's consider a few. Let's consider NH3. Let's look at H2O. And let's look at HF. HF is nice and straightforward. We have one electron from hydrogen. We have seven from fluorine. So the only way we're going to be able to bond this is hydrogen attached to fluorine with the remainder electrons on the outside. If we count, we remember that a single line is two, four, six, eight. We have a total of eight electrons. Hydrogen only sees two. Remember, the hydrogen never obeys the octet rule. Hydrogen always stops at two electrons. Fluorine sees eight. Rules are obeyed. Water. We have two from each hydrogen, two times one plus six for a total of eight electrons. We're going to put the oxygen in the middle. We're going to single bond to the hydrogens on the outside. Now we know we have to stop here on hydrogen because hydrogen is always going to be on the outside with a single bond only. And that's where we're going to stop. That's two electrons. So the remaining electrons, the remaining um, four electrons, have to be put on oxygen. So we're going to go two, four. We're going to count two, four, six, eight. Octet rule has been obeyed, and we have the correct structure. NH3, 5 plus 3 times 1 is a total of 8 electrons. Nitrogen in the middle, 3 hydrogens around the outside. We're going to single bond to them, all right, because we single bond to everything that's around the central atom. 
That's going to use up six electrons, giving us the last two for a total of eight on the nitrogen. All right, let's look at some double bonds and let's start out with formaldehyde. Formaldehyde is CH2O. So what do we do when we've got three times of elements rather than just the two, which we had before? Well, first of all, carbon is in the middle. Why? Because it has the lowest electronegativity. If you're not sure on this one, if you look at your periodic table, fluorine over here has the highest electronegativity. So the further away from fluorine it is, the lower the electronegativity. Oxygen is closer than carbon, therefore carbon is going to go in the middle. We know that the hydrogens are going to be on the outside. Why? Because hydrogens are always on the outside, attached to what we've chosen as our middle atom. Now, our oxygen is going to have to be bonded here somewhere, and so we're going to start out with that. Question is how many electrons? Well, we've got four plus two times one plus six is going to give us a total of 12 electrons. If we count, we have two, four, six on this current structure. If we put eight, 10, 12 there, we know that the, first of all, this is the correct number of electrons for our structure. We know that oxygen sees eight, but carbon only sees six. Therefore, we have to pull a pair in, and our correct structure is going to be hydrogen, hydrogen, and a double bond to the oxygen, making sure that we count. So we see what we have. Each hydrogen sees two. Carbon here sees two, four, six, eight electrons. Oxygen sees eight. The octet rule has been obeyed, and we have a nice stable structure. How about if we have ethylene, which is C2H4? We have C2H4. We're going to have two times four plus four times one for a total of electrons. Carbons have to be on the outside. So let's start out by making it even. It's not a bad place to start, where we put two hydrogens on each of these two carbons. If we put them all on one, we'd have too many. So if we look at this, that's 12 electrons. We've used 10. Each of these, again, single lines is two. We've got five single lines, so that's 10. We only have two more electrons, so we have to put another double bond or another bond here in the middle for a double bond, and we have the structure for ethylene. All right, let's look at some triple bonds, and let's start out with carbon monoxide. Carbon monoxide has got four plus six electrons for a total of 10. So we're gonna have um, some issues with the octet rule unless we really start to share a lot of these guys. So it's carbon here and the oxygen here. If we start out and we single bond, and that's going to be two, and we go four, six, eight, ten. Oxygen has enough, but carbon doesn't, so we're going to have to start pulling lone pairs in. And as we start pulling lone pairs in, the best we're going to be able to do is a triple bond between the carbon and the oxygen. Let's count electrons two, four, six, eight, ten, and that's our structure. Now, cyanide is Cn minus. What does this minus mean? It means we have added an electron. So we have four plus five, the valence electrons on carbon and nitrogen, plus one. Because we have added this extra electron for a total of 10, well, we've seen the only way that that can work over here. So we're going to have to end up with a triple bond to make this electrons work. We tend to take and put the entire structure in brackets with a minus on the outside to say that somewhere inside of this structure, we have an extra electron. All right, so let's do a few. And let's do a CHO2. So we have CHO2, and it's got a minus charge. So let's look at some numbers. We're going to have 4 plus 1 plus 6 times 2 from the oxygen plus 1 electron. So we're going to have a total here of 12, 13, 14 and we have 18 electrons. So how are we gonna make this work? Well, we know the carbon's in the middle, we know that hydrogen is on the outside, and we know carbon's in the middle because it's got the lowest electronegativity, and we're just gonna add oxygens until we can make this work. Now that is two, four, six electrons. At some point, we're gonna start realizing that we have to obey the octet rule, and we're very rarely gonna put a lone pair on a carbon, 
And so if we start messing around with this one, let's try a double bond here. If we do that, we're going to have two, four, six, eight electrons. So we've got 10 left over. Two, four, six, eight, 10. Let's count. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18 electrons. We have sufficient, and we're going to put a minus here. Now, why wouldn't we take and bring in this pair right here and make another double bond? People like to do that because it looks like it's more even. If we did that, we would then have a total of 10 electrons on the carbon. Remember here, our most important rule is the octet rule. That's eight there. That's eight here. And that's eight here. We've got to obey the octet rule. If we put any more in on the carbon, we'll go over. Let's consider our NO with a plus charge. If we have an NO, we have a five plus a six. Now the plus means that we have lost an electron. We've got a positive charge, one more neutron, or excuse me, proton, then it has electrons, leaving us here with a total of 10 electrons. We start putting this together. And we consider this, we know if we have two, four, six, eight, ten electrons, that's not going to work. We're going to have to put some lone pairs in the middle. So we follow the octet rule, and we're going to end up with a nice triple bond between the oxygen and the nitrogen, and two, four, six, eight, ten electrons total. This has a positive charge, brackets, and a positive. All right, let's look at a few more that are more interesting. Let's consider. CH2, Cl2. We consider CH2, Cl2. Our carbon is going to be in the middle. Why? It has the lowest electronegativity. We know the hydrogens are going to be on the outside. There's no particular place where we have to put them yet. Our chlorines are also going to have to be bonded to the carbon. And that's going to be our starting point. So let's count electrons. Well, we've got four from carbon plus two times one from the hydrogen plus two times seven. So we have a total of 20 electrons. So we've got 20 electrons. We're going to have to make this work. Now notice we're already in a pretty good shape here. The carbon sees four, sees four pairs already for a total of eight. Each hydrogen sees two, so it's done. So the remaining electrons, so if we subtract the eight that are electrons that are in bonds, We're going to have a total of 12 left over. So let's see if we can put them on the chlorines and make it work. So if we do this, we're going to do 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. Chlorine sees, or carbon sees 8, chlorine sees 8, and we have a nice Lewis structure with the octet rule obeyed. So how about instead we do CH3OH? All right. Well, if we start this out with carbon in the middle and we start putting this on, we're going to realize that we have too many things to put on this carbon. When we write this, the um, way of looking at this is that this H3 tells us that these hyd three hydrogens are attached to this carbon. So we're going to start out with this. The OH tells us that this is the order in which we continue to bond. So if we put the O here, we cannot also put the hydrogen on carbon because that's done. It's got already has eight electrons around it, it's full. So we're gonna to have to put the H onto the hydrogen. So we're getting into a more complicated molecule. If we look at our electrons, we're gonna have four from the carbon plus a total of four from these hydrogens times one plus six from the oxygen. And we're gonna have a total of 14 electrons. If we count over here, we have one, two, three, four, five, total bonds, we know that five times two here is 10. So we have 10 electrons already in bonds. 14 total minus 10 in bonds is going to give us four left over. The only place that they can be is on the oxygen. So we're going to do two, four, and this is our structure for methanol. The key here being that we cannot put this hydrogen over on this carbon because that would give us more than eight around electrons around that carbon. So let's consider a few ions. If we have NH4 plus, and make a quick note here, let's just consider 
and compare this to NH4. Now, one of these two do not exist. We had NH4, we'd have five electrons plus four times one for a total of nine. Nine should worry us a little because that's one spare. If we bond nitrogen to the four hydrogens and we take a look at it, that is obeyed the octet rule. Nitrogen sees a total of eight electrons, each hydrogen sees two, and we've got no place to put this remaining electron. If we put a dot here, it wouldn't make any sense. That puts nine total electrons on nitrogen. So this structure does not exist. What does exist, on the other hand, is NH4 plus, because this is five plus four times one minus one. Again, a positive means you have subtracted or lost an electron for a total of eight electrons, which is exactly what we want this to do, NH4 for the plus charge.